Um, yeah, I started when I was 11 years of age tapping, as you rightly say. It wasn't just tap, as, as I became good at tap uh, early on. The teacher suggested that I take up all other forms of dance. And I say that because that's what inspired me to create So You Think You Can Dance. Because I had so many kids come up to me saying, I'm a dancer, and I said, oh, really? Do you do, do, you do ballet? Oh, no, I don't do ballet. Uh, oh, you do ballroom? Oh, no, I don't do ballroom. Do you tap? Oh, no, 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 I don't tap. And I said, but so when you say you're a dancer, surely you need much broader spectrum. And that's why we said, okay, let's do So You Think You Can Dance. So you're a dancer, now prove it in every literal area, which I do believe that dancers nowadays really do need to be accomplished in more than just one area of dance because jobs are getting fewer and fewer uh, and companies are closing down. It's a, a really difficult time, I think, for dancers, so they need to be very clever in how they educate themselves. Uh, I was introduced into, as you say, the young generation, 15 boys, 15 girls, all singing and dancing. We had our own show on BBC television. And after two years, the choreographer decided to leave. Uh, and I got asked to uh, assist a new choreographer that was brought in, uh, an American guy called Don Lurio. So they got me as the assistant to start choreographing one or two numbers. It just worked out for me, is all I can say, because he got fired after a year and I took over the choreography. I was 22 at the time. I hadn't had enough experience with other choreographers. I hadn't really done as much work with other choreographers to have any sort of vocabulary for myself. But what I did have, thank goodness, was a creative brain. So I would be doing routines with frying pans, with tennis rackets, with anything I could lay my hands on that made it interesting to the point that I got to work with a lot of comedians who had shows at that time because they enjoyed the ideas I came up with rather than the actual choreography. Which of course then learnt, lent me into the production side because then I would write material for the, um, the comedians. Um, whenever I was choreographing, a little tip that everyone might be interested in, very similar to what I've got on my iPad at the moment, which are nine images uh, until I flick over and see the rest of you. Uh, but that's how I used to look at a television screen in order to clean up the routine. If you just look flat at a screen, you don't get to see everything going on. If in your mind, you literally slot it into nine images, you can spot in this corner what's happening there. You can then spot in the middle what's happening there and in that far corner what's happening there. It's much easier to clean up a routine by doing that. Uh, uh, should you ever need that and work on television and do anything when you're choreographing, you'll find that a godsend. Otherwise, it's just a big image and, and you can't, the brain doesn't take it in. Uh, anyway, so I now move into uh, comedy. I move into writing. Uh, I move into um, directing because if you are a television director, you have to know which cameras to cut to, where you want to close up. No one better with dance close-ups than Bob Fosse. If you look at his work, uh, a finger snap, a heel tap, anything is just beautifully cut into his routines. Uh, a little look at the head. Uh, it, it's that really finishing something off by using cameras rather than just dancing. And, and that gave it much more of an impact. Being able to direct cameras, the BBC then sent me on a director's course so that I could look at uh, camera lenses, how to use it. With writing and with now directing, I was given the opportunity of producing. Uh, and I produced a show called Dizzy Feet, uh, which uh, was about dancing. Uh, and used a number of choreographers, number of styles of dance, and that won the Golden Rose of Montreux. Uh, and I just really went on from there. But briefly, I don't want to go into my entire career, but I was successful with a number of shows, one of which was a big American show called American Gladiators, which I turned into a big um, stadium show uh, in England. Uh, and we actually choreographed the audience. 
So it's really good as a dancer, you'll find wherever you transition into, you know how to move people, you know how to entertain, you know how to handle yourself, which is far better. You've got much more of a base than any other producer or director that you come across because you will know far more about how to get on with people, how to talk to them, uh, and, and how to endear yourself to them. So uh, I, whatever you go on to do, uh, and I do suggest that you do look at other things other than dancing when you transition, uh, whether it's in photography, whether it's in physiotherapy, whether it's in dance teaching, or what, what you are doing now is a wonderful base for your entire life. It's changed enormously, absolutely enormously. I, I did a show, I was a dancer in England on a show called Sunday Night at the London Palladium. And it was a variety bill and it had jugglers, a bit like America's Got Talent now. Uh, lots of jugglers and ventriloquists. And then the top of the bill was Rudolf Noriev and Margot Fontaine. So in those days, ballet was just as commercial as the juggler and the comic. The one thing I would say is, when So You Think You Can Dance put street dancers together with trained dancers, they inspired each other. And I found that remarkable, that the street dancers wanted to learn more and realize that the core was really important in the body. So they would start doing classes. Uh, and the formerly trained kids would realize that this was quite an exciting thing that they were seeing and that involved them into that world. So you had two worlds come together, uh, and, and I think that really informed dance uh, uh, really well. <sighs> Creativity. Creativity. Uh, and if you are going to follow somebody or copy somebody, improve upon it. It's a bit like... Uh, when The Voice came out after American Idol. Um, American Idol was always about the contestants. Uh, and even when Simon Cowell was rude to them, you know, now I know why God invented earwax, he'd say, and terrible things. Or go and sue your singing teacher. Um, it was still about the contestant. What The Voice did was introduce the judges as the major part of that show. Their interaction was, it was more about them than the actual artists. And they used to have some great singers on The Voice, but not one of them really came and became a star like they did on American Idol. Because I feel it was more about the judges, but it was hugely successful because of that improvement. And of course, the, the, the chairs swinging around, uh, they'd improved on it. And if you're going to do something that is the same as somebody else, fine, use that as an inspiration, but be creative and improve upon it. So I, I think I'll go back to integrity as well. And that's all part of uh, improving on something being creative. So creativity, integrity, uh, and for me, humor. Because if you've got a talented person and a person that makes you smile, you're always going to err towards the person who makes you smile. You can see on So You Think You Can Dance, the best dancers don't always win. It's the dancers that connect with the audience because the audience are the ones voting for them. Um, I, you know, I always moan at people who don't smile. Sometimes you ask not to smile. Sometimes the, the subject that you're dancing doesn't require a smile, but it does require your eyes and it does require your presence for the audience. And that's really important. So. Whenever I say show me your personality, it's about presence as well as anything else. I, I just want to know that that light is going to come out of your eyes. And we've all got it. We've all got that little switch. Sometimes many of us don't find it, but it's all there. Uh, and we've just got to find it, turn it on and light the room up. And it is that feeling of power that comes out of your eyes and, and, and your entire body when you walk out on the, that stage and you want people to look at you. Not the person next to you, you. You're going to look at me. And you go to the best shows in, on Broadway or anywhere else, and you're sitting there, and you will notice the performers that are performing for you.
Even though they're not, they're using it for everybody. But they are the performers that catch your eye uh, and they're the ones that get the jobs. It means that, that you have the power over everything from the graphics through to the content, through to how it's directed, uh, obviously who's in the show, what this show is about, uh, and you carry the can too. If, uh, if the show doesn't work, you're the first one fired. Right. So it is, and, you, and, and you've always got to be in the knowledge that you don't know everything and you are totally reliant on a group of people, your production team, they're going to, if you're good, they will follow you to the ends of the earth until you realize sometimes, oh, we're all going the wrong way. We'll go that way. And then everyone comes around and, and they, you have to be good enough that you know they will follow you. Uh, and that's what happened. We used to make lots of mistakes on American Idol uh, and rectify them as quickly as we could. So you have to be in that position to listen to what your production team say, uh, pick out what you believe is the right way to go, uh, and then follow through. Um, I, as the executive producer of American Idol, was the showrunner. Uh, on lots of other shows, the executive producers are just the ones that provide the money uh, or provide the company. Uh, and it's the producer or director that runs the show. On uh, So You Think You Can Dance, um, I've got two uh, other executive producers that actually work on the show. All the others are company people that if their company is doing it, they get a credit in there. But Jeff Thacker, is the one that really brings the choreographers in, chooses the music, uh, and uh, gets that side of it together. And Mike Yorchuk is the one that gets the backstories together, does the editing in the uh, initial stages of all of the auditions. So different people, different strokes for different folks. And then I try and oversee the whole thing. In the next 10 years, I just hope that the work is there. I think, you know, we're, we're producing such great dancers and yet I think jobs are becoming tougher. Um, Broadway's always been very good. Uh, companies, I think we've got to stop feeling that ballet companies are elitist. I, I, I'm still shocked at the uh, small amount of uh, African-American black dancers that are not in companies. Uh, it's upsetting for me. Uh, certainly Misty's doing a good job. Um, and hopefully she will bring an awful lot more dancers of color into companies. And I think the companies have got to show that diversity. Other than that, you know, uh, please God, we get an awful lot more dance films together. Uh, interesting to see Spielberg's doing West Side Story again. I'm sorry he's doing West Side Story because I think it's an iconic movie. Uh, I just hope he does it as well as it was originally done, uh, if not better. Um, but other than that, no, I, honestly, I don't know. I think this pandemic has given a lot of people creativity. The, the little videos that I'm being sent, the comedy, the beautiful poems, the music uh, is stunning. I think realizing that the online classes now uh, are, are really beneficial and anybody can move into them. Um, I still believe we're pack animals. We like to be with other people. I'd love to see a virtual reality dance class where you, know, you put on your, your glasses and you feel as though there are dancers around you all doing the same thing. That would make it a lot easier for me than doing my plies uh, holding on to a breakfast table on my own. Uh, so I'm sure you know we're going to get far more development in the technical area now because of what's been happening with the social distancing and the quarantines. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. I just advise everybody to have plans outside of dance as well as dance. So always be looking at what else you think you can do. As I've said before, the physiotherapy, uh, choreography, photography, I would like to see more of. 
um, things that help dads move forward. Just going actually into the managerial side of companies is really interesting. If you enjoy maths as well as that, then go into the treasury side of dance. There's, there's lots of other areas open for dancers. And, and as I've said again before, I think dancers have an incredible background that a lot of other people in our communities do not have. Discipline, intelligence, uh, I, I, you know, what can I tell you? Uh, I think for you guys in Kaufman, and I do think Kaufman is just such a wonderful school. Uh, I've never seen anything like it in my life. When I walked around your school, I was just shocked. Uh, I fell at Gloria's feet and kissed her big toe. Um, she, you know, has created something wonderful there that will last for years and produce some brilliant performers, dancers, uh, and uh, you guys have got to now follow through. Having been given this opportunity, you've got to follow through and, and enjoy every moment of it. Keep working. I mean, I have got, I do a thing called Brit Week, which I um, started about 14 years ago, where it celebrates the union between Brits here in Los Angeles and the Americans. Obviously, this time was when Debbie Allen and I were spearheading the Los Angeles International Dance Festival, and the Kaufman students were obviously going to be at broad stage dancing as well. So heartbroken that uh, we lost that. I also was being given a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which I think the Kaufman uh, students were going to come to, because I think for me, if, if I'm going to boast about anything, that almost means more to me than the Order of the British Empire from Her Majesty the Queen, because I don't know how many dancers have got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, apart from the Gene Kellys and the uh, Fred Astaire's, the real dancers. Uh, and, and it's inspiring, I hope, for people to realize that whatever their dreams are, with luck, with opportunity, uh, you can do it. You can get there and you can do whatever you can. And it's not, as I say, just about talent because I, I never really felt I was that talented. I was creative. I got on with people. But, you know, you have to believe in what you're doing. And if you believe in it, other people will believe in you.